What's up everyone, MMA Sherdog for Bluff the Spot here, back with a special video today. In this video, I'm not only going to review some of the biggest hands played by Linus Love, who's one of the greatest players ever in No Limit Hold'em, but you'll also get insights from a special guest, who's a close friend of mine and a great poker player himself. Some of you guys probably know him from the mid and high stakes online streets, or you've seen his YouTube channel. It's Daniel, aka Show of Force. Daniel was one of our first ever students, and with the support of Bluff the Spot, he made it all the way from NL100 up to high stakes pretty quickly. If you guys and girls listening work your butt off and work smart, 2020 can be your year to do just that, but you really have to work your butt off. Now, I filtered my database for 100, 200, and 200, 400 no limit hands, so we'll see some great action. Let's do it. So Linus has 5-6 suited here, and he raises to 2.5x plus 8 snickers. 5-6 is a standard raise. OTB makes it 10.5. That always makes me fist bump. I'm like, hey, I make it 10.5 too. I must be doing something, right? Anyway, 5-6 is a nice playable hand in position. So pretty easy call, unless OTB goes huge. So the pot's already 4.5k. All standard so far, right, Show Force? So open 3 back call, right? Pre. Yes. Okay. And this board is really good for OTB, right? Because he's going to have kings here every time. He's going to have some pocket eights. And, you know, Linus is not going to have much. He often just has two cards between nine and queen. And, you know, he'll have some equity, but not much. So OTB doesn't need to bet massive in order to uh, to generate some falls to get value, protection, etc. Uh, especially with king, queen. Linus probably doesn't have ace king very often. So unless Linus has and like king eight, eights or fours, OTB has basically the nuts. He goes with a really small quarter pot C bet. And main Linus has a gut shot and a backdoor flush draw. His five and a six are not often live, but sometimes. So very easy call, of course, in position. He can still bluff his hand later. Um, and he can easy get raise. value. <laughs> you could even raise here sometimes. It's a board you don't want to raise too much. Uh, because just because, as I said, he doesn't have too much, right? You can just raise eights and fours and then just call, call, fold with the rest of your range. Yeah. Pretty standard. Okay. Oh, a deuce out of nowhere, like a sneaky deuce there. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You, you can never see it coming. That's how the Sunrunners do it. It's the stuff you don't expect. Exactly, yeah. Like a deuce, like, ah, oh, yeah, sick blank turn. You're never thinking, oh, wait, 5 6 has like double yeah. gutter now. Or you call the, uh, somebody down and you, they show some like really weird hand. You're like, yes, I got him. Sick hero call. And the pot goes, yeah, first. yeah, and yeah. It was like, oh, that made a straight or something like that. It's like those <laughs> yeah. Sunrunners always find like a way. They have a, yeah, yeah. a straight so sick, you don't even know it's part of the game. Exactly. That Yeah, that's really sad, actually, Yeah, when that happens, yeah. Mm -hmm. So O2B goes for a really big bet, actually. Um, so he's basically thinking, well, the deuce doesn't change anything. Linus still doesn't have better than king-queen almost ever, so I'm just going to happily keep on value betting. He also blocks some hands like queen ten of hearts that will float a flop in Linus' shoes and then fold. So it's quite a big bet, but okay. So Linus is not getting immediate odds, right? He's He basically has eight outs. So he has around 16 to 20% equity, depends on whether all his outs are alive, depends on whether his five and six are alive, in this case or not, and he needs 36%. But the thing is, there's going to be 100 big blinds behind, right? So he's going to have a lot of implied odds. Because if OTB is wrapping a hand like this, if Linus hits a, th if Linus hits a three, for instance, he's probably going to get the stack, or at least very, very often, right? And OTB yeah. can still bluff him, of course. Also, it's one of those where Obviously, you can't call too much because it's such a big bet size, but when OTB checks the river, let's say OTB rivers a jack or something, you need to have a couple of bluffs, right? Because otherwise, why would OTB ever check all the river? So you need to float air like this sometimes, and this is the only open end that you got. So it's a low EV call unless you have an upswing account, as the race would say. <laughs> Linus does have an upswing account and hits the offsuit three. So OTB is thinking like, how does this card ever hurt me, right? except for an occasional 5-6. So he's pretty happy about going all in, I assume. And Linus is pretty happy calling. No slow roll, 62k pot. Okay, so <laughs> now at the end of the hand, we have to rate the play. So maybe OTB could have gone a bit smaller on the turn, but other than that, I think his line is really nice. And I think OT uh, Linus's play is nice too. So I would say nine out of 10 for both guys. <laughs> okay, 8-4. Eight, 8-4. Four. Eight, four. Well, I guess you're not gonna. Hero folds. Yeah, yeah, you're not, not gonna play that. Uh, okay. Truth tell us the button, 2.5 is a pretty normal sizing. 
even when this end was played, which I think was like a year or two ago. Lions 3 bet, which is also quite standard to 2.5 uh, to 4.2k, 4. 4. so 10.5 big blinds. True Teller 4 bets, and line is. Oh! Oh! You didn't expect <laughs> that one, huh? I did not. Uh, True Teller calls. And. Oh, that was an. Uh, that was a. Okay, guys. Linus is an amazing player, but he makes mistakes too. I was in that. I was in that hand. I know the meta came from that hand. I also know how those guys were playing like back then. Uh, Tenant suited is not a, a solver-proof shove. So Linus has to think that Truth Teller is really out of line here. That he's probably just opening too many buttons. That he's four betting too much. Maybe he has a read on which exact hands Truth Teller four bets, and he thinks the ten and the nine therefore are good shoves. This is not a fantastic play, but whatever. You know, we make mistakes. Um, Truth Teller's play. I mean. You can't really rate this a 10 out of 10, right? Because he just 4-bet called with kings. But Linus' play is, uh, is far less than a 10. It's kind of a random session. Linus against Spell Russian Born to Tilt and Katya. So Linus goes with 2.5x again, plus 12 Snickers this time. Born to Tilt, 3 bets, 211 big blinds. Queen 6 suited is generally not a hand you want to 3-bet very often, right? Because it doesn't have that much playability on the middling boards. Linus' play is close, you know? Like those King 8, King 7, King 6s, they're, they're always mixed, so... But if Born to Tilt is 3-betting this much, then uh, probably it's a, it's a barely winning call. Line is called, and we go to the flop. Pot's already quite big. Born to Tilt bet's kind of like a funny half pot sizing, minus 5 Snickers. That's a fine strategy. Honestly, you can do anything you like. You can bet 3.5k, you can bet 5k, you can bet 1500. Any strategy makes sense. Obviously, you can't bet 5k with your whole range, right? But you can bet small, you can mix it up. What do you think? Yeah, this is yeah, this is one of the boards where you can definitely mix it up and yeah, a lot of strategies do make sense. With basically with all the you can definitely take this route where you wanna like deny equity uh, on the flop, so go for like go for a bigger sizing. I think like just like range betting here as well, keeping it simple is fine as well, especially for guys playing uh, lower stakes and mid stakes even. Yeah, the EV oh. difference is not that high. However, it's way more difficult to play a strategy like that. So it's way easier to make mistakes. Yeah. Uh, Linus' yeah. hand is an easy call here with uh, with a pair and some okay backdoors. Born to tilt. Um, now he decides to bet third part again. So I really don't like this play. Linus improves to a set, or like he improves to a straight or two pair quite often. So yes. Born to Tilt has a lock on the Ace Kings, maybe, but Linus can have King Nine or Eight Nine or Queen Ten or Queen Jack or Pocket Tens. So unless you want to keep betting your entire range here, which I don't think makes sense, I, I don't like this play too much. Um, also means next time you check, you always have hand like you know Ace Jack, and then you just get run over. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I'm guessing like yeah, he's thinking like on this particular Broadway card where he does have all, all the Ace Kings, he wants to have like. Uh, high like a pretty high frequency in uh, in betting, but yeah, I guess yeah, it is easy to make mistakes, especially if he if he has like quite a bit of a checking range on the flop as well. So yeah, I do get it uh, that he he does it. I guess like maybe he's just betting a lot and betting more mergy. It's not that bad. I guess he's yeah, just kind of like thinking like okay, he has quite a bit of an advantage and it's not that easy to play. I would say against this, I, I would uh, assume we have to do some raising in position there. And it's, it's not an easy spot. Mm -hmm. um, oh, you sure. can easily easily like get run over here if you're not playing correctly against these small sizing. I think these like small sizings are it's counterintuitive like how tough they are to play against, um, especially also like on future streets uh, to play against them properly. So yeah, for sure. I, well, the, but probably like Linus is not the 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 best candidate to to exploit here. No, I agree. Well. Linus is actually not in the easiest spot. I think it's a call because of the pot odds, but I mean, if Born to Tilt has a head like Ace King, at best he splits, right? So, but uh, with the odds and the equity he's got, I think it's still a, a low EV call. Probably turning this hand into a bluff sometimes. If let's say Born to Tilt checks on the five, it's a nice hand to bluff because you block a set, you block a straight, you block some hands like Kings. Yeah. So he hits his out, kind of, because he, st he still could be losing. Yeah. And now, oh, oh, yeah, exactly. I, I was curious. I was curious. Like, wait, what's gonna, what's gonna happen now? 15, never, never a boring hand at high stakes. Fifteen big, big ones. So basically, Born to Tilt thinks he he has the best hand sometimes, but Linus is gonna improve to like two pair quite a bit, and he can make him full two pair. 
right? So because yeah. he's thinking maybe he doesn't have too many kings or eights, or is he thinking he's bottom range? So, I mean, it's okay, but Linus can definitely have like king jack, maybe king seven, like he does now, king queen, king ten, king nine. You know, he can have some kind of eight. So Linus can have quite a few uh, king x here. So Born to Tilt has to be confident that Linus now falls in like Queen 10. But to be fair, if Linus has a hand like Queen 10, this is a really tough call, right? Because what does yeah. he beat? He beats like some kind of suited ace, maybe a little flush draw, and some kind of funky hand like this. So the funkiness is definitely off the charts in this hand. Yeah, at this point in the hand, I guess, yeah, you have top pair, but uh, it's kind of a pretty shit hand already. So yeah, you can say king nine you kind of, you discounted because he did not raise you, you discount a lot of it yeah he still has like a lot of two pair that he still has to call like two pair right so not the worst play it's maybe easy to overdo then again yeah we still have that those like ace kings that he doesn't have so we still have a big advantage i think we can still be pretty aggressive here mm -hmm. so maybe he's thinking that no, I, I agree. I mean, he gets to be somewhat aggressive here, but this hand is, you know, somewhat ambitious. On the river, I like the river shove more than the than the turn bet. So now we have to rate them. Linus made a marginal call on all on all four streets, to be honest. But it, it was probably the best one. I would say his play was an eight out of ten. Uh, Board to tilt's play, it was okay. It was a six out of ten. Ten out of ten for funkiness. Ten out of ten for creativity. It was a it was a solid play. It's just something you can't always do, right? It's, it's a fun. Fun out of ten hand for played by board to, to tilt. Well, like yeah, Linus had like an easy decision, turn and river, right? I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, on the on the turn, he could be dead already, right? Or dead to a chop. Yeah, right? but he bets one third, and he has like yeah, like the pair plus open ender. I agree. I guess I guess the bigger bet you can argue, but it it was a shitty spot uh, on all four streets, but I think he made uh, the correct one. So in this hand, Scarface opens two point five. Uh, gas trader makes it 5k which is a really large sizing especially with only a bit over half a stack so he should have gone a bit smaller and this was like a ser serious gambling session right you see everybody's got like really big stacks like money was flying around for sure <laughs> yeah so this was not like a knit fest like nowadays so against that big three bet i i definitely would like to see linus four bet here because yeah, gas, but, uh, gas trader was quite out of line in this session he, he has queens right so he doesn't want to see a flop like a king or an ace so if he goes bigger if he has aces he goes like 4k and if you have seven deuce you go all in yeah you have to go no you go 5k again and yeah i guess here like pretty easy spot for like cold five bet showing a lot of strength here right mm -hmm. no unblocking ace five suited low frequency yeah. play so here gas trader goes all in nothing special so it looks quite light to get an ace queen in this spot, but if you saw the uh, recent video where we uploaded on YouTube, you saw that we got in sevens against ace deuce for 100k. So the dynamic was quite aggressive here. So for 56, this is uh, quite an easy get in. Once gas trader shoves, it's obviously quite ugly, but you just have to call because he can have hands like ace king that at that point you're priced in against and lower pocket pairs, etc. Maybe some kind of uh, crazy hand sometimes. So good play by Linus, he just happened to lose, which happens. I guess we don't need to rate this play. This end is 100, 200 heads up deep stack between uh, True Teller and Linus. So it's a pretty sick, uh, pretty sick game because they're so deep. True Teller is definitely a guy with a lot of money and a lot of heads up uh, deep stacked experience, even yeah, though he... Linus probably has the, the better fundamentals. So let's see. Definitely has, uh, has the balls there. Mm -hmm. Yes, they both have big balls. The big balls advantage. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So Linus opens jack three, which is not a great hand, but your head's up, right? And you're posting blinds every every hand. And True Thoral's hand is like decent, so it's generally uh, generally gonna be called. You would like the three, but like a, a more playable or a worse hand or a much better hand. This hand is like right in the middle. Not anymore. Top <laughs> two pair, he checks. Doesn't really make sense to lead here. He doesn't have any particular advantage here. On his bets half pot. So this is a board in which you could do many things. You can bet small, medium, large. So Linus is thinking, well, I have top air, uh, top air and I unblock all the draws. So I'm going to bet this hand and probably, you know, check back turn or river. Yeah. Truth all raises. And Let's see you check back now. Yeah. Easy call, of course. I mean, Linus, you know, he blocks hands like the one that Truth all has and he unblocks every single hand like nine, seven, etc. Yeah. Deuce turn. This is a turn in which True Teller, True Teller should go for a very large sizing or he should check. Yeah. Check he does. Nice. What do you think about this mix? This, uh, no, this I think mix? it's good. I mean, uh, True Teller also unblocks all of Linus's air, right? So if he checks turn, he gets mm -hmm. to check raise again. 
And also, you want to check sometimes so on the turn, not just with like you know King Eight, but you also want to check some good stuff. So yeah, most of, most of the time you want to bet here, but uh, this is a this is a sweet line. This is definitely a solver approved line. Yeah, I like it. Linus is not thinking. Well, I have the best hand most of the time, but with my three, I unblock a lot of True Teller's decent hands, right? If True Teller has a hand like nine six, he doesn't even mind, you know, just winning the pot now. I mean, maybe with maybe against nine six, uh, he doesn't mind uh, seeing another card, but against a hand like Queen Ten, for instance, uh, he kind of does. Linus bets small, less than a third pot, and True Teller goes big with the check raise. So he's thinking, well, I unblock all okay. the I unblock all of the the over pairs as well as all the draws, so I'm gonna check raise. So yeah, very nice play. Check call. I don't really like as much with this hand. Yeah, I mean, especially with the, against that sizing, I guess. Yeah. Exactly. Call by Linus. But now, <laughs> well. so it's quite close. But the thing is, True Tyler's overpair. I mean, True Tyler's not beating an overpair anymore, and Linus can easily have a flush. So I think at this point, you don't want to go for like an 8k bet, some kind of quarter pot block bet. I think you just want to shove or check. I think this hand is not quite good enough. So I like, uh, I'd like to see a check. Okay. Nice. And yeah. Linus, I mean, with less than three quarters pot behind, easy shove, of course. I don't like. I, I would not bet eight in his shoes either. I mean, uh, I, either you go all in here or you check. And truth, I was thinking, well, I unblock ends like ten nine, etc. Maybe Linus is fucking with me. You know, how can I fold uh, top two here? Maybe Linus even has the same type of hand. Uh, it's close against a good player. You probably have to end up calling this hand. Yeah. Like, against a, like nitty face up player, you can probably find a tough fold. But uh, yeah, I, th I think we. Uh, I think you gotta call this one. So. Yeah. Have to also take into consideration like how big he turn he he raised on the turn right like I think he made it pretty huge right against the uh, Linus's mm -hmm. bet. Yeah, you can pretty much take uh, open enders quite a bit out of uh, Linus's range without uh, mm -hmm. flush draws to it. So kind of hard to come up uh, with bluffs. But we did see in that five six and that Linus is willing to call light. Obviously that was not the same session, but uh, you know Linus Linus is a good enough player to to find some uh, you know find some bluffs here. Yeah, but you know. I, I think folding is an okay play, but you can't make a habit out of folding hands this good against such a good player. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I would say Linus' play was an 8 out of 10. True Teller's play was uh 8 out of 10. Seems fair, right? Uh, no, I think we'll go like for 9. It's pretty interesting line, right? Okay, so OTB opens here in the 100, 200, 300 game. I think it was the same session as the hand we reviewed before. Linus 3 bets to 11, which seems all right. Most people go even a little bit bigger now. So there's multiple strategies you can use. You can three bet a bit bigger, a bit smaller. Both have merits. So I like kind of the medium size. Show Forest likes the, uh, the bigger size. Easy three bet, obviously always have queens. King Jack suited easy call. This is not really the hand you want to four bet. Like King Jack off suit, you want to four bet maybe or like ace four suited sometimes. So maybe like queen nine suited, stuff like that. But King Jack is too good on the button at least. Yeah. So Remember how Born to Tilt won 2200 here, so Linus decides to go with a third pot bet. Although this board is a little bit more dry than the other one, so Linus does decide probably to bet his full range here, or at least bet a lot. And OTB, I think, should only call here. There's not a lot of raising going on. If you sim a board like this, it will tell you to raise like maybe 2-3% of the time. So most people raise sometimes or never. What do you think? Easy call? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty, yeah, I would say pretty easy call on this board. Yeah, like you said, not a lot of raising going on. And yeah, maybe he bets one for because he has queen. That's possible, but I guess we have <laughs> to give Linus a little bit more credit. So this is yeah. interesting because if you sim this one, probably it will tell you to check the pocket queens at least very often, but Linus is mm -hmm. not. So he's probably thinking that because the board is so draw heavy, he wants to bet continue betting and like queens. And maybe if the board were rainbow, then he would decide to check. Who knows? It's very important that once you see about your whole range, obviously you have strong checks, right? So you can maybe check hand like queens or hand like aces or hands like ace jack or jack 10. Uh, you'll have some hands like four or five of clubs, but those are, you know, probably you want to keep on betting as well sometimes. So he decides to bet, and it would even be a nice bet, bet checking hand. OTB yeah. thinks in this spot that he unblocks all the, you know, most of the draws, like especially the lower ones and the club draws. He blocks kings. He probably thinks that Linus mostly checks with ace king. But would continue to bet with maybe like ace 10, 10, 9, 9, 8, 5, 6, ace 5, ace deuce. So yeah. I think this is a pile approved call so far. Yeah. I think it's, it's interesting how um, earlier we saw a hand when they were like deeper. Actually, OTB, when he battled turn here, he went for an overbet. 
but now actually Linus, we see like he kind of goes for like a smaller bet on the turn yeah. uh, and leave him leaving himself more behind on the turn. Yeah, it was under, a little bit of a different river. spot, but yeah, you're right. So, yeah, uh, yeah. Both plays again have merits. Like uh, in poker, a lot a lot of the time there's multiple uh, valid strategies, and one is not necessarily much better than the other as long as you know how to play it. So it's also a matter of preference. And one thing, guys, if you're, let's say, playing a 100, if you look at high six players, like the, the top five to 10 best ones, they still play quite differently. Yeah. So it's not like everybody plays exactly the same, which, oh, yeah, which, which should give you a bit of hope, right? That if you have some kind of uh, unique style, that it could work if you keep on improving. This is actually another interesting spot, right? Linus could definitely end up checking here, thinking that, well, if OTB has nothing, he's going to shove. If OTB has a queen, one of the, I mean, if he has the last queen, he's probably going to shove anyway. Uh, obviously, it does put a jack in an easy spot if OTB has it, and like, like he does, he can now check behind, uh, whereas, you know, he might call. But I think Linus, actually, if, if Linus had jacks, I think he should almost always shove, but if he has mm -hmm. queens, actually, I don't mind checking, you know, getting a, a getting a bat out of, like, you know, ace-10 of clubs or, you know, eight. Yeah, I mean, there's quite a few, right? Or ace-5 yeah, of clubs or stuff, stuff like that. So, actually, wouldn't mind a check here. Yeah, would be pretty sick, yeah. But... Linus doesn't listen, and that he got sense. lucky here because OTB has like, you know, this hand is definitely not a guaranteed call, so that makes me actually like a check even more because OTB obviously is not folding a queen, but you have two of them, right? But yeah. he, may, he may definitely fold the jack. Yeah, so, pretty yeah. counterintuitive line by Linus here. I mean, yeah, exactly. You, you're not, you don't really see this, right? Like triple battling with top set and it's like dry rounds, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. On the turn, I get it a bit more because the, the board is still like quite draw heavy, but on the river, I like it a bit less. But it does happen sometimes, so. Or maybe he just thinks OTB is a station who's too rich and you know yeah. he's like, I'm gonna milk this guy. Yeah, exactly. So, maybe, probably. 16K. Yeah, okay. nice. So, okay, <laughs> how bank. do we rate this hand? Um, OTB, pre-flop, flop, turn, very standard. You could fall turn, but I like to call. On the river, I think it's probably good. Unblocking the 10 and the nine and the clubs. Uh, blocking kings is also important. Linus is going to fast play kings more than aces. Yeah. I think OTB's play is an 8 out of 10. Linus's play is a, a 7 out of 10. In this end, we have old school Swedish sicko Will Hasha at 100, 200 against Linus. I think this hand is about 2 years old, roughly. Mm. Linus opens. Seems like an easy 3 bet by Will Hasha. His hand has a lot of equity, a lot of playability. Can definitely call a reasonable 4 bet. So he goes 11 and a half, a little bit larger than standards. Uh, maybe he wants to size up because uh, because he's deeper. Maybe not. <laughs> so Alliance goes 26 big blinds. Seems okay. And this seems like an easy call. You know, your hand is just, it's gonna, you're fl gonna flop a lot of flush and straight drills and good pairs. And you can check Rizal in quite aggressively in what's gonna be a very big pot. So easy call. Okay, nice. I mean, as you see, he has 40% equity against Alliance's value range. Uh, value four but here not this range um linus says he's yeah. king so this board i expect four inch check and this is a really good board for linus i mean he's gonna have ace king here every time pocket kings um you know has a pocket queens aces maybe he has some bluff kings like you know king 10 off let's say uh will hash also doesn't hit this board much he'll have hands like king king jack suited ace, uh, king queen suited etc maybe some six, six seven some pocket eights but he doesn't hit this board too much right so mm -hmm. linus gets to be very aggressive yeah, yeah, I'm curious what he does. I, I would say, like, yeah. So he bets, uh, yeah, 2.6 into 10. Yeah, it's, it's like on this board particularly, I'm curious. I would not be surprised if you have to fold uh, even this. I mean, even this, like, like Jack 10 mm -hmm. here of hearts. I would yeah. not be surprised I, I, with the king being so strong for Linus. Yeah. Because I, I would assume Will Hasha doesn't really have ace king much, heads up. No, I mean, they are a bit deeper, but uh, heads up, it's such an aggressive dynamic. So yeah. Pio, I, th I think, is actually quite passive with these hands in position, uh, out of position with hands like, you know, these back doors. So, yeah, I think that check raise, check call, and fold are all decent options, but you, you have to be tighter than you think in this spot. Uh, as you said, Linus is just doing so, so well. Yeah. But yeah. Well, Asha calls. This is not necessarily a spew. If you do this with every type of back door hearts hand, then yeah, this is a spew. But, um, yeah. you know, calling this one or queen jack of hearts, this is uh, pretty premium. Yeah. A decent yeah, I mean, most people, like, Treating in a four bet pot here, treating uh, queen seven three similar to king seven three. I've, it's a huge, yeah, it, it's a big, uh, yeah, it, it is actually a considerable mistake, I would say. Yeah, 
and most people do that. Okay, I assume Valash is going to check. Uh, okay. No, no, he will not check. Um, so what Valash is saying is that he has five six, whereas one is doesn't, and he's also saying that he has more flushes. Um, so Walhasha will call a lot of suited and suited four bet, whereas Linus is representing mostly like pocket pairs and ace king. So his reasoning is not even the worst, I would say. But at the same time, Linus is going to bet all those flush throws and Walhasha will often raise, right? So then he's removing a bunch. Also, he has to really mind his pocket eights and that type of stuff. So I think it's, I mean, at first glance, you think like this is ridiculous. I don't think it's ridiculous, but I think it's a bit much. And especially, I don't think you always want to lead here, even if you do lead. And this hand is like the worst hand to lead. I mean, you have no equity, no blockers, no nothing. So, you know, uh, then I think it's better to like just have Linus check back like whatever, ace nine offsuit, and then you bluff into that, uh, you know, capped river range. So yeah, I don't really like this uh, too much. What do you think? But yeah, probably does not make that much sense to, to dunk here. Even like if you have like more flushes, at this SPR flushes are not that, not that relevant anymore. Uh, it's still like around like, like the the forward part is pair is more like around like top, good good top pair is good pair so that's not uh yeah an advantage that much of an advantage even deeper so uh, it's more like it looks more like a play like uh, fuck I have jack tens like I'm not sure what to do here like he can fold definitely fold like ace highs and whatever or queen highs are better but yeah it seems like a freestyle definitely oh just, well Asha loves the freestyle yeah yeah so and yeah there's that, funkiness in there and there's hard in there. Yeah, so uh, freestyle. I mean, you can always freestyle. Freestyle is always like makes makes life more interesting. So mm -hmm. yeah, from that point, I like it. Uh, Linus has nothing to do but call. Like he can easily be ahead against like a funny and like this, and you know he probably has a decent amount of equity with the king of diamonds. Yeah, shoving I don't think makes much sense. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is here, I assume Will Hash is gonna shove. Yeah, the thing is now, he doesn't even know what he's rep representing anymore. If he's ever bluffing, this is like, you know, one of, the, one of the runners to do it on, right? But at this point, what is he representing? He's representing like King X of Diamonds. Yeah. Right, so he's repping like King Queen, uh, down maybe like King 10, King 9 of Diamonds. Yeah, right? so, so this is like, I think, again, like, this is a spot where he, he's making a lot of mistakes. So you, you see like people like playing high stakes heads up. I think, like, yeah, I, th I think this is pretty bad. Yeah, well, because like you said, if you think about like how does he have like I think I would probably say Linus has a pretty big advantage when it comes to flushes here. Yeah, like Linus like has the, like the big flushes. Exactly, like queens plus diamond or like king king x plus uh, king x of diamonds or whatever. Well, Hasha doesn't have it much. He can maybe have like king queen offsuit sometimes uh, if he if he calls that. Maybe he shoves with ten nine of diamonds, but you can't expect to get called by worse much often. So. Yeah, if you ever want to bluff, like this is not even the worst spot, right? You're also blocking some hands like Jacks plus Diamond. But at the same time, you're not really representing much. And it also means next time you check the, your capped range, you're just going to get blasted off off your hand every time. Yeah, but so, that's kind of like what you see, right? That's kind of like what you see with these like more old school players. They have like a really good feel for the game. Like whatever, like if you think about ranges, whatever, like uh, more like th theoretically, technically, yeah, like, okay, like he should not really do this much, but they like these more old school players like okay like they they do have like this good feel for the game and they know like when to pull the trigger when they not when not to and they cannot really explain it like theoretically but i mean this this is how like they get to where they are like, it's more like old school players they have like a uh, really like good feel for the game uh -huh. so i would say probably for him that's like his strong well, point the feel his feeling for the game is slightly off in this hand i think <laughs> but uh the creative the creativity is there right yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, I mean obviously Linus snaps the nuts. Uh second nuts. Nice pot to him. Boom. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you probably see like Jack then how far it's like, wait. He's <laughs> like what? Yeah, but like what is he supposed to see, right? When he has the King of Diamonds and he gets shoved he's like, what is this like does he just have yeah. like ten on the diamonds and he doesn't want to check so he might as well shove or something like that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Great feeling shoving into the nuts. Yes, that's good. It's like you don't have to think. You know, it's like one one pot behind. Like if he checks, you shove, and if if he bets, you call. You know, or you you go all in. It's really easy. So yeah. Yeah. If you're if like you're Linus, you can be on Tinder, meantime during this hand. Yeah, he probably it's was. Basically, like yeah, like swipe Tinder where like chat to some girls and just oh yeah, call. Oh yeah, call. Call. Two dollar opens four fifty. 
fine sizing minus three back to 11 and a half now so you see these were different sessions because he's using different sizes unless it's because he's deep stacked <laughs> who knows uh nine eight is a three bet lot it's not the greatest hand because it's reverse dominated to ace king but it's still a you know a good playable hand wait aces you mean ace king wait like if the board if the board is queen jack 10 then you lose straight over straight with which oh with eight nine set okay yeah. sorry True Teller 4 bet's quite big here, but they are a bit deeper. Uh, this is a fold. This is not a call. I mean, I would have made this call as well uh, two years ago, but this is a fold we know now. Yeah. Unless True Teller's like way out of line, but I prefer to call other hands rather than this one first. I mean, yeah, but it, it's not terrible or something. Especially no, deep, it's deep not like if he calls a like king-queen offsuit here, that's awful, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, like exactly. I would rather call this, so yeah, not, not, not a bad play or something. Sick flop. See, you know, you don't want aces when you're deep. This is like the sh yeah. shittiest hand ever, right? Like, you cannot win. Like, if you have aces, <laughs> wait. I think someone when I was playing 100 L, someone said this, but I felt like I felt it was pretty accurate. If you have aces, usually, like especially if you're playing deep, if you have aces, you're either winning a small pot or losing a big pot. <laughs> yeah. So Doyle Brunson in Super System, he once said like aces is like a hand that only gets worse, whereas ace king is a draw to the nuts, and ace king only gets better. So you want to have ace king. Exactly. Like, I I rather play ace king than aces. I'm not sure I agree with that logic, but you know, <laughs> sure we've yeah. all lost big pots of aces. Um, yeah. So Linus is thinking here that you know he's gonna have eights, nines, and jacks, um, nine eight apparently, maybe queen ten more often than True Teller, and True Teller has a lot of ace kings here, so he goes for the small lead. Yeah, and True Teller. Cool. Ooh. Uh, True Teller ships it in for 200 <laughs> big blinds. Uh, this is a very bad play. Uh, I don't mind if he raises here. Like, he should have raises, but not to all in. And also not with aces, right? He should maybe do this with queens, because now he needs protection against a king and an ace, and also he blocks queen 10. Um, you know, but not with this, this particular combination for this sizing. So, no, this is yeah. a bit of a punt. Yeah, True Teller can maybe raise to like, you know, 11k or something like that, and that would be a perfectly fine play, although this hand is a good slow play too. But I don't like just outright shoving, because now you're letting Linus fold like 9-8, or like 8-7, uh, or like, you know, 10-9, stuff like that, and you're you're putting it in with terrible equity. This is like one of the better hands he can get it in against, and he only has 27%. But Linus doesn't have to call like Queen Jack suited against his sizing, whereas if he goes with a smaller raise, then maybe he does have to call or ship. Yeah, you can argue that if you put yourself in like True Teller's shoes, maybe you can say that, like maybe he's assuming Linus is Linus's leading range here, is like very like high equity driven, so he almost always has like pair plus gut shot, that kind of stuff, like pair plus open ender actually a lot uh, as well, and he wants to like really deny a lot of equity from those hands. And really, like, put those hands, like, pair plus, like, that's basically most of his blasts, right? Like, he has some kind of, like, hands like this, maybe, like, some decent hands, but he also has a lot of, like, pair plus draws that they want to block, but they want to see the next street. So he's maybe thinking, okay, let's put max pressure on those types of hands, uh, because maybe he's thinking that's his range here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Somebody could, asks, could be. This, somebody says this is a call in the Bible, but the thing is, if you go back to preflop, you say, normally the four bet. The four bet would be much smaller, but this is a giant four bet, so nine eight nine eight doesn't play nearly as well uh, then. But yeah, versus a smaller uh, versus a smaller uh, four bet, you would play it. Oh, that's an ugly first run out. And <laughs> split. Oh, oh, two uh, two yeah. to one. So yeah, it's an ugly one, but Linus got it in good. So I think uh, if we look at this play. Linus's play, I mean, obviously you can't say with today's knowledge that that would have been a fold, right? That's unfair. Uh, that's like criticizing people who used to play high sticks poker on TV. Like, that's not fair. So I think Linus's play is uh, an 8.5 out of 10. I think the lead is, uh, that is a definitely a pile proof play. You just need to not only lead this, but lead a bunch of other stuff as well. Uh, True Teller's yeah. play, I really don't like. This is like a... If this were like 100 big blind shove, I wouldn't like it, but it's okay. But since he just shipped 200 big blinds, it's a much larger mistake. So I would say it's a 4 out of 10. Yeah. Line is opens to 2.5 plus 4 Snickers. And by the way, a Snickers is worth 50 cents uh, with our currency. Lahasha well, makes it uh, 2300 and I assume, yep, call. 6-4 is not the type of hand you want to 4-bet very often. Its blockers are quite bad. You're actually blocking some of the weaker hands that Lahasha might fold. Uh, but it plays quite well. Wilhasha checks. So Wilhasha well, is going to check quite a few decent hands here, like some, you know, weaker kings or maybe pocket kings or like aces or like, you know, 10 unsuited. Also some uh, some weak stuff, of course, like maybe 7-8 of diamonds, let's say. 
Um, with these bad flush draws, you want to be a bit careful. So you check them behind a decent amount, but you can also bet them sometimes. Yeah, I'm curious if he if he checks back here. So okay. he does bet small. This is probably not a solve or a proof play, but maybe he thinks that Wilhash is like a big station on these runouts or that he starts donking on flush runouts like he did before. <laughs> more of them. So, you know, just because like if you put this in a solver, this will very rarely happen. That doesn't mean this is not the best play in game, right? So we can't really, we don't really know what's going on because we don't yeah. know the dynamic here. So you can't really say if this is really bad or not. So line is bad. So maybe he's thinking he checks back more of the eight high flush runs type of stuff. And with this one, he unblocks more crap. So who knows? Yeah. Turns a flush draw. That's pr uh, an open ender. Sorry. That's pretty good. So now it's probably time to start, uh, keep betting. Make uh, well, Asha full in like ace queen or in like pocket nines or queen nine. Maybe like a 10 even. Linus or Lennox, as Bill Perkins calls him, bets a bit bigger this time. You know, he's saying he's got a decent king or better at this point. And it gets called. Pause already nearly 20k. And. <laughs> Yeah, this is like the Linus factor where he somehow backdoors a straight, like the most disguised straight ever, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, like if, if Wolhasha calls River here with Ace Ten, he's like, ah, oh, I fucking got him. Like he is like, oh, oh shit, never mind. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's like, like a lot, so many, so much stuff missed, right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, the six four. <laughs> like, oh, it's probably like one of those spots, like you said, right? Like, you're like, oh, you call, you call here, and you see like six four, like, ha, huh, got him. And you're like, oh, wait. Yeah, I've wait, heard that he many times. Yeah, yeah. So Linus has so. the nuts here. Uh, well, Hasha cannot reasonably have the nuts. I think he should just shovel in. Not only does he have the nuts, but he unblocks all potential calls, like, you know, a king or ace 10, etc. Or yeah, sick. Queens, whatever. So very easy all in. All in is the only option, in my opinion. You can also bet 15k, uh, but not with this hand, right? Maybe you want to bet yeah. 15k if you have it on the hand like king queen or like king 10 or something like that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, uh, oh. All in. oh. Oh, no. oh he, wait, he, this is kind of strange. I did not expect this. This is definitely not a pyro proof play. So this must, like, that makes it even better almost because Linus for sure knows this is a shove. So he must be doing something, like he must know something on top of that, right? Like how he's like, oh, Mwahash is never good enough to, to call more than uh, than queens on this turn or stuff, stuff like that. So I'm gonna bet small, right? Um, honestly, I'm trying to find a reason why this is not a shove. I can't think of that many. Yeah, so they're saying it's probably like it's more like most likely more like uh, an exploitive player, more like dynamic player. I mean, it's one hundred percent. Like uh, if you yeah. if you look at this hand, this you know maybe maybe like well, Hush has check raised him three times already when he made a th thin value bet, and like after his timing, he thought, oh, this this is going to be the time where he does it, so I adjust, and that's absolutely fine. This is just not a a play in theory, but you see that people start deviating from GTO quite a bit at this point. So yeah, nice hands. Yeah, I'll give yeah. Linus an eight, and I'll give Wahash, uh I have no idea. Okay. Oh, exactly. We don't know what. Yeah, like yeah. That's it's hard right. to say. But he didn't do that's anything hard. ridiculous, at least. Uh, so, yeah, we'll yeah, give him a blind. Be, uh, we'll give him a six. blind seven out of seven and a half. 